This little shiny rock is seemingly an expensive rock at that, but why? What's the reason behind its huge price tag? Is there a genuine reason behind it? Or is it due to the fact that we just decided that diamonds were this expensive? This is Brain Spill, my name is Tank, and today we're going to find out why diamonds are so expensive. And for whatever reason that you may already think it is, it's a lot darker than you first think. And also a lot more messed up, so um, let's get right into it. Diamonds, those sparkly little rocks that have been making people go, ooh, ah, for centuries. They're dazzling, they're luxurious, and they're bloody expensive. I mean, come to think of it, what makes people want a diamond? Is it because of the fact that it's shiny? So yes, what makes a diamond desirable? Is it due to the fact that it's a shiny rock? Maybe. But the problem with that is there are many shiny rocks, a lot of which are a lot cheaper than a diamond. So I think it's more so due to the luxury of owning such an expensive rock, something that's shiny and also deepens a massive hole in your pocket. This is basically just a shiny status symbol. But what makes it so expensive? Let's start with the obvious. Diamonds are expensive because they've been marketed to be expensive. It's like having anything and marketing it as a premium item. So for those who are in the market for a shiny rock, then the marketing of this rock is a great way to make some easy money. In the year 1947, De Beers, a diamond mining company, launched a campaign which declared a diamond is forever. This frankly genius marketing ploy changed the world of diamonds forever. And even more so in this rather famous advert you may have seen before. Between 1939 and 1979, their wholesale diamond sales in the United States alone increased from $23 million to $2.1 billion. So not only was there a clear line being drawn here that if you love somebody, the only way to show it is to buy them something expensive, but that thing had to be a diamond ring. So if that's now the status quo and everybody thinks that's what it is, how much do you price this thing at? How much is a diamond? Well, there's no simple answer and it can vary quite a lot depending on who you are and what you do. Because the general rule of thumb that they marketed it as was that a diamond you should buy for your special someone needs to be two months salary. Yes, that is an awful lot of money to give someone which is basically just a mineral from the ground. This advertisement was released in the year 1997, but it was clear that the narrative was men were being told how much to spend on their women in order to show them how much they appreciated them in order to get engaged for marriage. Of course, times have moved on quite a lot since then, and we aren't quite in the same boat as we were, but the stigma has stuck. If you want to show your special someone how much you appreciate them, you best be ready to spend money. And that has to be on nothing but a diamond ring. This is quite frankly marketing, which is pure genius. Not that I agree with it, but whoever came up with the idea at this company, they deserved a raise. Or maybe just a couple of diamond rings to compensate them for their efforts. They even doubled it up by claiming that a second diamond is the only way to celebrate someone's wedding anniversary. So if buying a diamond the first time was not enough, you can spend even more money by doing the exact same thing all over again. Next thing we'll know is that they'll be marketing it to buy it for someone's birthday, or Christmas, or maybe every time that somebody buys a new toaster. Look, I don't know where you draw the line with this, but with a company like that, the sky's the limit. Either that, or as many diamonds as you can mine out of the ground in one sitting. It's hard to think of a marketing stunt that is ingrained so much in our consciousness and that it is just a thing. So it's not surprising that many people just expect this to be the norm, even though it is purely down to marketing. And that's just it. They told us how expensive these things were, how important they were, and basically the fact that this is the only way that you can show your love and appreciation. So we just have to do it because clearly there's absolutely no alternative. Well, back then there wasn't anyway. You might think that diamonds are expensive partly due to the fact that they are quite rare. Well, as a matter of fact, they are not as rare as you think. There are huge diamond mines around the world, but here's the kicker. De Beers, the same company who performed that amazing marketing trick, 
once controlled about 90% of the world's diamond supply. By strategically limiting the supply, they managed to keep prices just as high. Diamonds prepared as gemstones are sold on diamond exchanges, but with only 28 registered diamond exchanges in the world, they are incredibly tightly controlled, making the supply chain sparse and sought after. Wholesalers and retailers are able to buy a relatively small amount of diamonds at these exchanges, after which they are prepared for final sale to us consumers. Some people would call this entire industry one of the biggest, most well-known, most accepted scams of all time, but, well, that's just some people's opinion on the internet. The diamond supply chain is a tad complicated. From mines in Africa to cutting and polishing in India, and then all the way to the swanky jewellery stores in New York, diamonds travel a long distance. This complex journey involves many middlemen, and each step adds to the price. Think of it as a game of diamond hot potato. Everybody wants a piece of the sparkly action. You see those sparkling, perfectly cut diamonds in the jewellery store? <laughs> yeah, they didn't always start like that. They were rough diamonds initially, and turning them into dazzling gems requires a lot of skill and precision. It's like turning a lump of coal into a diamond, but in reverse. Skilled diamond cutters carefully shape and faucet each stone they find. And the better the cut, the more it's worth. Now, if you're seriously considering buying a diamond, you've probably heard about the four C's. Carrot, cut, clarity and colour. Each of these factors plays an important role in determining the diamond's price. You want a bigger diamond, you gotta pay more. You want one that looks like it's not been cut by a five-year-old, you've gotta pay more. Just the way it is. Yes, the entire industry is pretty horrifying when you think about it. A celebrity might be wearing a bracelet covered in diamonds, and that one bracelet might be worth more than your entire house. Um, which is terrifying to think about. Um, yeah, you should probably keep that close by. Diamonds are formed deep in the Earth's mantle, under conditions of extreme heat and pressure. Then they're brought to the surface through volcanic eruptions. The whole geological process is basically nature's way of saying, I'm going to make these things ridiculously hard to get, so you best be patient because I ain't spewing any up anytime soon. Gee, uh, thanks Earth. So, whilst they're not the easiest things to come across, those who control the mines control the supply, and therefore are at the forefront of this frankly multi-billion dollar empire. Diamonds have a dark side as well. Conflict diamonds, also known as blood diamonds, are mined in war zones and sold to finance armed conflicts against governments. In some of the more politically unstable Central African and West African countries, Revolutionary groups have taken control of diamond mines, using the proceeds from diamond sales to finance their operations. To combat this, there are regulations and certification schemes in place, such as the Kimberley process, which aims to ensure that diamonds are conflict-free. This is done by requiring diamond-producing countries to provide proof that the money they make from selling diamonds is not used to fund criminal or revolutionary activities. Although the Kimberley process has been moderately successful in limiting the number of conflict diamonds entering the markets, some still manage to find their way in. This is a major problem, this whole thing about trying to stop conflict diamonds and trying to make it a sustainable and not terrorising business sounds like a difficult fix. Right? In recent years, technology has given us alternative lab-grown diamonds. They're practically identical to natural diamonds, but can be much cheaper because they don't come from a mine. So the natural diamond industry had to step up its game, which can also contribute to the overall expense, according to them. You'd think the only way that they could combat this was maybe bring down the price of their own diamonds to try and combat this, but if they did that, that would undermine the entire model that they've built, and people would probably realize that these diamonds are well above the price of what they're probably actually worth. Some people simply buy diamonds as an investment. They figure that diamonds will hold its value or potentially even increase over time. This investment aspect can also drive up the prices of these items, especially for larger and rarer stones. Let's be real, it's basically just one big shiny status symbol at the end of the day, and that is what gives this its huge price tag. So, why are diamonds so expensive? Well, it's a mixture of factors. 
marketing, rarity, supply chain complexities, cutting, polishing, the four C's, geology, conflicts in African countries, competition for lab-grown diamonds, investment law, and good old peer pressure, which all contribute to this insane price tag. So after all of that, is there any hope that this industry will change and that we will see the end of the diamond industry? No, <laughs> I just don't think we will. It is what it is. It's a staple, it's been running for so long, it's incredibly lucrative, and people aren't gonna give that up anytime soon. So that's your answer for why diamonds are so goddamn expensive. If you guys like that video, here's another one just like it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Fantastic.